Let's not keep him waiting any longer. Let's give him a nice big round of applause. It's Philippe. Good morning to you. Hola, bon dia, Philippe. Tudo bem? No, hello. Good morning. Uh, Lovely to meet very you. nice to, to, to be here. I uh, I'm confess I didn't know the existence of your show before, but but I, I can see it. So quite uh, uh i mean it looks good it, yeah, thank you so much well, you, 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 <laughs> you you came on a good morning i think because we you know we're talking about health and fitness and of course pickleball True. can be so helpful to people can't it and it's a great you know this we, we, the, the focus of the of our conversation this morning and the show is is you know the expat demographic probably of 50 plus we're mm -hmm. talking about and pickleball, I mean, I know you're going to tell us about the tournament that's coming up in Caldas Jarenia, but some people won't really know what it is. So I think perhaps that's where we could start. And, yes. and tell people how helpful it is for, for the, um, you know, the aging expat, perhaps. Uh, well, uh, pickleball, I guess it's a, an amazing sport for a whole demographic of, uh, of people, from kids to, to older people. It's very easy to, to start to pick up because... Uh, technically is not very difficult so uh, uh, it's not like other racket sports where like in table tennis or ping pong as, a, as you also call it you have all those pins and the ball can get yes. those little quirks no this is a, a more straightforward the 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 the, the movements are, are gentler and 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 easier to pick up uh, it's not as demanding physically as tennis, although it has a lot. Of, it, it gets a lot of of tennis uh, technique uh, you know, and kind of strategy, uh, but the ball and the and the racket it's much lighter. So and you don't have to run as much because the court is uh, is reduced in size. Yeah. So and it's not just about power, is it? It's it's, it's yeah, not just it's about power. Game. power it's about uh, it's about uh, tactical uh, uh, awareness and and moving because if if the technicality of the sport is easy to pick up and it's so everyone kind of feels they are in the same level mm -hmm. what uh, what makes someone stand out if the perception of the game and the awareness the 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 uh, kind of geographical awareness where you are where the ball is and kind of uh, putting the ball where you want, but, uh, uh, but it's very easy to to put the ball where you want. It's just getting practice, maybe reaction time. Reaction time. It's it's a great exercise to 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 kind of have the hand eye coordination and yep. and uh, so uh, both for kids who are learning to, uh, the sport, it's a very good entry level exercise because also the paddle is is light the ball is light so they can hit the ball very easily and they they can progress to other sports racket sports but it's a it's a good uh introduction to 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 racket or paddle sports uh, absolutely I've, I've seen this i mean we have a mutual friend don't we who, who had you yes. uh, be here yeah. this morning who connected yes. us and that's colin a rugby so you haven't out. played the ball before well, I have because he invited he invited the, the whole family over to Kaldash where you did your demonstration. Yes, and everybody in the family had a go. You know, we we range from um, from you know uh, four years of age up to our in our fifties, and everybody had a go that day and enjoyed yes, it. It's, it's it's incredible. Uh, when I started, I actually started playing in Singapore. I lived in Singapore. I was an expat before as well. Right. Uh, uh, and when I started playing, the, I was the youngest by far. Everyone really? was like 60 and 70 people there. They have a very healthy attitude towards sports in a community, not yeah. as like uh, competition sports, but as a community. So every neighborhood has a sports center and uh, retirees and old people all go there to play. And when I started, I think, okay, th this is going to be, I only saw old people. I went with the <laughs> uncle of mine, my, because my wife is Singaporean, since she has family there. He introduced me to the sport. And I was like, okay, le okay let's try. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if I will like it or not. You seem to, uh, uh, not my demographic. I'm, I'm quite sportive and, 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 and uh, let's say competitive as well. Uh, but then I realized, oh, no. They are beating me. They are, they are, they are, they are, I mean, it's, it's. How embarrassing. 
It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing because uh, the first few months I couldn't win one game. It, it, really? It, 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 yeah. I, thought, yeah. I thought you were going to be like rise through the ranks. No, because, because uh, I mean, the, it's it's the thing about the sport. You can be playing. You, you are, I mean, I'm just turned uh, 40, but uh, back then I was 36 or 37. Uh, I was playing against 60, 70 years old. But because it's not a, a, a physical demanding sport, the difference of age doesn't doesn't really translate to to to, to, yeah. to the outcome of the of, of the game. So it's it's the experience, and they were much more experienced uh, than I was there. I, I was just being introduced to the sport, and they were playing for for ten years or, or, or more. That's uh, brilliant. So that is brilliant and hilarious. <laughs> that's that's the the beauty of pickleball, and I think uh, the reason why in the United States it's it's crazy. It's uh, the the amount of players and and the boom that uh, that it had in the past uh, decade it, it's astonishing. Uh, in Asia, funny enough, the, the numbers are, are very big as well. Obviously, the sport started in the United States. Uh, it transitioned to to Asia in in the eighties, uh -huh. and now you have a lot of countries in Asia with with a massive uh, with a massive uh, community, and I, I think from the last ten years. Uh, it's starting to pick up in Europe. Okay, Spain was the first uh, country, then UK as well. So those are the two big communities in Europe. And in Portugal, we introduced. So I returned back to Portugal two years ago. There were already a few groups, and actually, the Caldas group is actually the oldest in, uh, in the country. I think they started in 2017 wow. as an expat group. Yeah. Um, then. You have in Algarve a few communities as well that 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 started. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but but they 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 are quite established already. Uh, but everywhere in the country it started as an expat activity because for the common Portuguese it was not known, uh, and that's what we are trying to do now. It's we are trying to to bring the uh, pickleball to uh, to the Portuguese people to 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 make it. Aware, I mean, I, I don't know if you know, but paddle, which is another yes. uh, racket yeah, yeah. sport, is it's yeah. a very uh, it's very big in Portugal. It was also very big in Spain, and the the work that we are trying to do is trying to bring to entice these paddle players uh, to try pickleball uh, because uh, yes, it, it's it's a different sport. It has. Uh, uh, but it's a uh, double sports as well, and and uh, a paddle player or a tennis player or a table tennis player, they will pick up pickleball very easily. Absolutely. Uh, so th yeah. there's an active there's an active um, engagement, is there, or strategy for bringing people from bet between the sports for bringing. Like you, you, you. It's like it sounds like, like a whole war. I think the the, the best is uh, word of mouth. You you bring yeah. one, they uh, you make it. Especially if you're trying to entice uh, uh, like an experienced player that or is already playing paddle very well. You need to to bring and and make him play with good pickleball players, so he understands it's not an easy sport. Because okay. that's and, and that'll thing. be the challenge. That'll be the challenge, won't it? This is another thing. It's a very uh, uh, like communal sport, but as in anything, it can be very competitive as well. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and, and it's like uh, uh, the graph. If you are very good players, like the the, the professional Americans, I mean, it is hard to to, to play with them because uh, uh, the, it, although it's easy, that there, there's a jump at some point. You 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 reach like a plateau. Mm -hmm. Good enough to to play in a, in a, in a, in a fun, but then there's a there's a, a an extra an extra kick for uh, to be a professional, and and uh, people who are introduced to the sports they think, oh this is uh, like a third uh, a third age kind of sports because you yeah. we only see in videos uh, uh, old people playing. It, it, one thing they don't know that maybe if you play against those older people, you will lose it, right? If you're starting the game, as like, I did, like you did, yeah, 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 as yeah. I did in the beginning. But uh, but people don't 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 realize how competitive can be as well. Well, well said. And the other thing about this, uh, which I think is useful to talk about, 
is 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 integration into 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 the community here so think, you know, it's, it's, it's sociable it's, isn't it it's a great a great uh, uh i think we have in our group in porto so we are based in porto uh, okay we have uh Right, right now it's almost half half but a lot of expats coming and such and and i think it's a good a good way in to to meet other people you are in a new country you don't have you lose your family you lose your friends you are here you, you don't lose you just decided to move right you, you live but you want to expand your your cultural uh, uh, and your your group of friends and this is a, ni a very nice way to, to do it absolutely uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds it sounds amazing ex, because ex -pack myself. Uh, well, you uh, understand, don't you? You I, understand I, completely. And I always use sport as a, 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 when I was living abroad as a way to 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 meet people. Yeah, Either I, I, in football, you table tennis. I mean, uh, uh, pick a ball later on. But but it's such an important uh, kind of part of my life as an expat uh, to because, totally understand that and and, and think that will be very helpful for people it's a gateway of 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 meeting uh, uh, new people absolutely so you portuguese originally uh i my, half of my family is portuguese uh, from uh -huh. my mother's side and then my father's side is all over the place uh, uh, all over That's europe the, is that the paskivish is it, yeah is yeah it's the polish okay. grandfather although i don't speak polish and okay. i was actually born in brazil uh, wow, what an international fellow you were. When I was very young, when I was six years old. Well, that, that, that you make a great point, uh, Philippe, about this, uh, about a, a different way to integrate. Not everybody wants to go to an expat meetup where they have to walk uncomfortably into a bar or a cafe, sit down and make polite conversation. Yeah, With it, this, it, you get a racket in your hand and, and there's a distraction, isn't there? And, and, uh, then, and then those 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 relationships kind of grow with a, a, a yes. much more uh, uh, connected in a, in a exactly. In a, and you're saying you know in, in your club as well, you've got fifty fifty half foreigners, half local Portuguese. What a wonderful way of making um, exactly. native Portuguese friends as well. Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, so you're in Porto. Um, Colin was saying that there's a tournament um, in Caldas as well. So tell us how. Could you begin by telling us what Peak is and how this works okay. across so the country? We we, we, we started uh, this company Peak. Uh, Actually, as an uh, uh, a league for Europeans, okay. So uh, we started, and our first tournament was in Porto uh, back in April, and we managed to attract a uh, hundred players all over Europe, the the top players, including cool. like fifteen or twenty of the top players of each country. Uh, and then uh, we had our second uh, European League in Spain, in Alicante, uh, back in, in July. And we are actually doing uh, our third uh, European uh, League in uh, in UK, uh, in, uh, in Hampshire, oh, cool. uh, close, close right. in between London and, and, and Southampton. Yeah, uh, yeah. But after creating this uh, European League, uh, uh, we we thought, okay, we're starting to have some Portuguese uh, people joining this European League. So why not? And and I could see there were groups popping everywhere. There's there's a group in Braga. There's a group in in Vienna de Castelo. There's a the Caldas group, which uh, which is the oldest, as I said, and maybe uh, it, it has it, is the biggest. I don't know exactly how many members that, that they have. Then in Algarve, you can see popping uh, in several cities. Obviously, the Lisbon uh, they also have a, 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 a great community. So we thought, why not start a, a, a Portuguese? league as well on top mm -hmm. of the european league a separate league but uh, catered for for the portuguese player and a portuguese expat player in, uh, that maybe is not as competitive or as good as the european so obviously our level is 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 uh, is still not there compared to, to the rest of europe uh, but is our own reality and we only uh, increase our level if we play together so that yeah. that was the the thought behind the 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 portuguese speakable tour which is a specific league within peak leagues so Brilliant. basically uh, explaining peak peak uh, is a entity that is orga is organizing uh, several tournaments uh, and we have these two leagues the european league and the portuguese uh, tour 
uh, and you're coming to, to Keldish. Coming to Keldish. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's incredible. It, it, in the first tournament, it was in Setúbal in, in September. We had it, 80 players. Uh, and it was amazing. I was expecting, when, when we decided to create this, I was expecting 30, 40 players maximum, which will be the local community and some, and some extra players, hardcore players that would come to play. Having 80 players at Sutubal was very surprising. Uh, and then for the Calders, almost 90% of the tickets uh, uh, sold out in the first day when we What? Booked. This is tickets so, to take part? So you're, you, this is yeah, a yeah. So, so to register. So to register in a competition, you need to, uh, to, to, to register beforehand. So you cannot okay. just appear. Uh, uh, and it, almost all the tickets went out in the first couple of days so the 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 search and the and the desire to 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 play in this tournament uh, is is amazing uh, and and we are surprised that it is going so well uh, because we didn't know we had so much players when uh, is it so people can come uh, is it still possible to take part in the tournament uh the tournament is sold out uh, right. right now is it possible it, to come and watch Yes, it's uh, we have uh, the tournament is going to be in Caldas de Rinha in the the pavilion, the the, the sport yeah. pavilion of, yeah. of yeah. Associação Arneirense. Yes, um, and it will be on from Friday uh, evening. Uh, I have a small pickable clinic before the 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 competition, so we will we will have a clinic where I'll be teaching. Uh, uh, intermediate players who want in, to improve their game. Uh, cool. We'll have a clinic at 3 p.m. and a 5. This uh, coming Friday, this week? Yeah, this coming Friday. on the Is, Are there any opportunities? Uh, um, the most likely um, inquiry, I suspect, here is people wanting to try it for the first time. Will be, people be able to you, try you, it? You can time? come. You can come to, uh, to, to have... We'll have some breaks and, and you can... You can uh, you can come and try, and we well, have paddles. So and, and then the bigger game around the country, because we're getting um, questions coming in. This sounds like fun. I picked the right morning to tune in. You certainly did. Um, and it sounds perfect for you. She says, I can get a bit competitive when my kids were little. I even struggled to let them win Monopoly. But life lessons they'll never forget there. Uh, sport and activity, a great way for integrating. Where do I sign up? So that's a good question. Um, where can Louise sign up? And you, presumably you've got a national network of, of clubs. So we, we have uh, uh, our website, uh, peakleaks.com, uh, and you can register through there. We, we will send you a link where exactly the registration is. Because okay. we, we were so overwhelmed with the first uh, uh, tournament, the Sutubo one, we initially we had the registrations through our website, but it got so big that we decided to, to move to a, a, a more professional platform that already uh, uh, kind of um, hosts all type of tournaments. And so people need to create a profile in that platform. It's called RACT, R-A-Q-T. Okay, so people will download the app, uh, create a profile, and then you have there uh, several tournaments that you can uh, all over uh, Europe. Uh, and we pick, we are there, we have there uh, like an uh, internal uh, page in, inside the, the, the application, and you can register in all our tournaments through, through the RACT uh, app. Okay, so, so did you say pickleleagues.com? What, what can uh, you do is that, is, in a private chat? Because I'm not getting yeah, yeah. very good. So if you our do that, website is here. Yeah, yeah um, th this is wonderful, Philippe. I, well, I hope the, the uh, competition goes very well on Friday. It sounds like there's so much passion for the sport. Not to be confused with paddleball. Pickleball is an open court, isn't it? With the with the open the court, so it's ball. It's uh, uh, the court, the size of the court. Uh, they took it from badminton, so okay. it's a badminton court with a net lower it down to yeah. more or less one meter it's slightly lower than the tennis height okay the tennis night net height you have it, it can be a sport played uh, one one uh, versus one so singles or doubles but the doubles yeah. is is the most common uh, version of the sport okay. so you don't have uh, you don't have the walls like in paddle uh, so it's in in that sense is is closer to tennis if the ball hits and you make a winner it's a winner right so you need to 
hit the ball back in order to 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 keep the the game going uh and he, he he also gets a lot of table tennis because strategically uh both both teams will come up closer to the net to a distance more or less the same distance as if you were if there was a, a table a ping pong table in between the two doubles yeah. so yeah, yeah reaction times have uh, are very similar to table tennis because you end Ooh, up right. you end up like a three meters apart from each other each team yeah. uh hitting the ball uh, when the game speeds up it's very frantic it's very fast you really yeah. need to have a reaction time and uh, and you have this uh chest type of attack which is very common in, in table tennis yeah. the backhand which you also use in pickleball and How it's hard. you, you don't so, have so, that type of attack in tennis or in paddle so, so it's, it's very it's like the beauty the it's like a hybrid of what's great about the game's table tennis every, every game it. every every good aspect of all the other games are gel into pickleball and, and that's what makes it so fun and so addictive Philip, yeah, thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you. Much pleasure and, and good luck. Thank you to me. And I hope to see you uh, in Caldas visiting us. Well, yeah. You can do a live, you, you can do a live uh, through well, the we can tournament. Do that. We can do that. As long as there's no food or drink available this weekend. I need a rest. Um, peak, <laughs> Peakleagues.com is the website address there. Thank you so much for introducing us. Thank you. Thank you. Today to this. Would love to give it a try. So you've got a new convert, I think, with yes. Solo 50 Plus. Uh, Louise there sounds perfect for you and for the person who's moving around as we know um, the, she lives quite the nomadic house sitting lifestyle that's what her videos are about on YouTube you you can plug into this sport all around the country presumably in Portugal now so there yes there's groups uh, from north to the south you just uh, uh, if you use Facebook you can search uh, pick a ball in Portugal and and will come up all the groups Super. That oh, that man. more in the in the internet in in a Google search. I think. Well, do come yeah. back whenever you've got news or you want to tell us more about pickleball. You're always welcome, Philip. Always. Great to meet you. Yes. All the best to you. Thank you, Carl. Thank good you. Good event this weekend. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Right, and what an amazing morning we've had. Uh, and Louise, I, I think you're glad you popped in this morning. Apart from everything being on Facebook, of course. But uh, I'm sure that there are ways around that. And uh, just a couple more things to share before we go off this morning. We've got our meetup, of course, in San Martino de Porto at one o'clock. Next week, it's a bit of a special one. And uh, we'll be moving along. The, well, some of us. It's, it's not It's not a compulsory move. Um, I need to frame this as a slight, as an addition rather than um, a replacement. Uh, we, we've had, we have had our, our wonderful meetup at Palmeira. Um, for a couple of years, I think it must be now. And um, is it that long? Certainly getting on that way. And every Wednesday, you never know if there's going to be half a dozen or, you know, 20, 30 people at the height of our of our gatherings there. And that's at the very informal atmosphere of Palmeira, where you can just get a coffee or a glass of fizzy water and just chat, or you can have a... Have, um, we, some people stay there for hours um, on end, and they're still uh, going for... They're still there for dinner, sometimes when we've had a lot of fun um, at Palmeira. And thank you to Nelson and Margarita for being such great hosts there. I believe they're closing during November, so there will be changes. And one of the, and to herald the change, uh, in addition to, I'm sure some people rocking up at Palmeira next week, we've got this at the Storytellers Palace. And uh, this is a bit different because it is more formal. There's a €25 Euro lunch uh, available, which includes all your soft drinks and a delicious lunch cooked by the proprietor or one of them anyway. Um, and uh, we'll be, I think, Nuna's popping along. We'll have Sarah Davey from Spartan FX um, and other speakers and people with advice, not necessarily sort of formally speaking, but available on hand to assist you with your life here in Portugal. Or you might just want a bit of peace and look at the view from a beautiful balcony there. The weather may have cheered up a little bit. But look, there's a covered area where you can sit at the bar and look across the water here in beautiful San Martino de Porto. So that is an addition to our meetup schedule. That'll be happening. That's come quick. That's a week today at one o'clock in San Martino de Porto. I trust you had a great time last night, Heather, at the Cabaret Voltaire Lounge with the Caldas de Arena uh, meetup over there last night. Uh, details have now come forth. For what I'll do is I'll put the details for Philomena's next trip. And now for my next trip. 
to Golgao on the 11th of November. We'll be going Sharabang trip from Silver Coast to Golgao via Al Moral, the castle in the river. The details have been finalized and that is bookable. I will put a link to it on the home. I'll put something on the home page of the website so that you can book through, click through to that. Uh, and a couple of pictures and videos that have come in uh, since we've been on air this morning. This was mine yesterday, which caused me to say, looks like winter has really arrived now in the bay here. That's what it was like. Stormy and atmospheric in San Martino de Porto last night. Hopefully the weather will cheer up uh, by lunchtime today or lunchtime next week. Uh, when, when you'll be able to sit outside or inside this hotel uh, next week. And this beautiful picture. Morning to you, uh, Bob. I think this came from you, Bob, didn't it? Yeah, clearing off momentarily uh, here in uh, Carrelia, uh in Pont de Lima there. So, yeah, th this is what we expect. Well, not what we expect. This is what sometimes happens. You think it's going to be a miserable old day today. It's been raining overnight, and it can be beautifully sunny. It can look like this again by lunchtime. Uh, it really can here in Portugal. And a bit of video from uh, Joao de Nort from John. So good to have you back, John. Here is your video. Um, the dynamic waves, I believe, crashing in Vienna yesterday. Just a little clip, but uh, this gives you a beautiful view of the Atlantic. In one word, they're bracing. Thank you for that, John. All of your wonderful contributions, if you will, on 913-590-303. Thank you so much today to uh, Jackie from Tia. Jackie from Kashgai, who joined us this morning. And join us tomorrow night, of course, for the um, tax-efficient tips and financial planning for expats in Portugal webinar at 7.30 and the Dream Team at 9. Thank you to Henry. I, I, I have many, many thanks, endless thanks to give to Henry for the impact he's made on my life recently. Thank you to Henry for dropping in and to Philippe telling us all about Pickleball. One more thing to share. A special shout out to uh, Antonio F., who over on our GMP VIP platform, if you want to support the show, um, please do so. Um, with a with a monthly contribution. If you like what we do uh, and you want to help us keep the show on the road, so to speak, um, join sign up at uh, gmpvip.com um, with, with a monthly donation and you'll get access to all of this wonderful stuff over here, the community timeline, um, a classroom full of all sorts of mini courses and resources, uh, a calendar to give you um, reminders of what's happening when, and you can access members directly with via direct message. You can also block them if you don't want to come here for that sort of thing as well. And it's gamified as well. You can win yourself a Good Morning Portugal mug when you've achieved a certain level of contribution. But the reason I'm taking you there this morning is I want to jump to the latest comment, uh, which is, do you remember the Portuguese sayings of the day, which uh, T-Duck um, started up? Antonio F has picked it up and run with it. And his most recent is Dara Bofetada. E esconder a mal e da vilhão. It's one of those ones that's got a sort of poetic ring to it, and one of those one of those Portuguese sayings that has a slightly enig enigmatic and um, code breaking sense to it as well. Giving a slap and hiding your hand is a villain. Um, make of that what you will. But I wanted to say thank you so much to Antonio because this is a thread now with two hundred and thirty two comments. Uh, they're not all Portuguese sayings of the day but most of them are. So thank you, Antonio, for your wonderful contributions um, to our, our GMP VIP, our Love Portugal resources, the, the private network for the supporters of the Good Morning Portugal show. Thank you to each and every one of you. I wish you a great morning and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when, of course, we'll talk to Veronica and Carl Hyde. Yes, it's a month already since we spoke to Veronica in the Algarve and Carl Hyde in uh, Lisbon. The English gentleman in Lisbon and the American lady in the Algarve. Join us for that tomorrow and uh, have a great day. We'll see you then. Bye for now. Bom dia, Portugal! In Portugal there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need Featured 
guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. A little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. 